Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to teach you how to optimize Microsoft Access's performance by adjusting the task priority in Windows. Today's question comes from Raj in Denver, Colorado, one of my gold members. Raj says, I've been building an Access database that involves a lot of mathematical calculations, and it has been really slow. I've optimized my queries and made sure my tables are properly structured like you show in your classes, but some operations like running detailed reports still take ages to complete. Is there any way to speed things up without upgrading my hardware? Thanks. Well, you're welcome. Yes, Raj, one thing you can do once you've made sure your database is properly built is you can optimize performance by adjusting the task priority level in Windows. Now, understanding task priority can make a significant difference in how quickly Things run like queries, form loads, report generation, that kind of stuff. But now remember, with great power comes great responsibility. So tweaking settings like this can improve performance, but it can also cause problems. So let's talk about it. All right, first let's talk about when you want to do this, okay? Here's a little if-then statement. If your database is mostly local calculations, in other words, you're not pulling data off of a network because if you're pulling data from a network server, that's always going to be the slowest bottleneck, right? That's going to be where the, the, the slow performance comes from most databases is by pulling information over a network, over the internet, whatever it is. Okay, so as long as that's not the case and your database is properly optimized, in other words, you've got good table structure like I show in my classes, right? You've got multiple tables where necessary, you're properly normalized, uh, you've got your tables indexed where they need to be indexed properly, your queries are set up right, okay? If both of those things are true, then we can talk about setting your task priority to a higher level. All right, and I'm marking this as a developer lesson. Even though there's going to be zero programming in it, I still think you should be at the developer level before you start messing with Windows Task Manager properties. Okay, so if you're a newbie, if you're just getting used to working with Access and you're just starting off, if you have little Windows experience, don't play with this stuff. Okay, go, go away and come back in a year. Okay? This is for those of us veterans that have been around Windows for a while. All right, so go ahead and start your database, any database. All right, once it's open, we're gonna press Control Shift Escape to start up the task manager. All right, Control Shift Escape. And yeah, I have to look this up all the time too because I don't use this that often. I have a, a shortcut to the task manager on my Windows system taskbar down on the bottom, so I just click on that. Or you can go Control Alt Delete and you'll see it on the the system menu, but all right, that's what it is. Control shift escape if you use it a lot. All right, here it is, task manager. Here's Microsoft Access. What you're gonna do is right click on this guy and go to details right there, go to details. That's gonna bring you to the processes and there you can see msaccess.exe. Now, if you got multiple copies of your database open or different databases, you might see multiple copies of this. So you gotta make sure you find the right one. All right, what you can do is right click and go to set priority. And now you can see it says normal, above normal and high. Now, we're going to talk about these more in just a minute. I recommend you don't touch real time. That can definitely cause some system instability and can cause windows to crash. So I'm going to go here and pick high. I start with above normal. See if that does it for you. If not, go to high. Let's just switch to high. All right, you want to change priority? Yep. Okay. And now if you do the same thing, you'll see that we are now at high priority. What does that mean? That means that Access is now getting a higher priority than everything else running on your system, including your web browser, Microsoft Word, whatever else you've got running on your machine in the background. I should also note while I'm in here, this is where you also go to end a task, right? If Access stops behaving, right? If it locks up and you can't close it by any other means, usually this happens from bad VBA, right? Some bad BB code design, and you're stuck in an endless loop or something. This is where you can also come to end that task. All right, but I'm not going to do that at the moment. And now you should be able to go through and notice that your application is performing faster. Ho hopefully it is. It might not be depending on what the issue is, but it's one more tool in your box that you can try to get access to run better. Obviously, with my little tech help free template here, I'm not going to notice any difference, but you can try it with your application and see. All right, so what are some of the benefits of doing this? Well, first and foremost, you may see improved performance for computations. All right, mathematical computations, queries and stuff that run in memory, that kind of stuff. 
you will probably see better responsiveness of your user interface. I know one of my pet peeves is when I'm waiting for a form to load and it takes a second before I can actually click on stuff. That stuff should run faster because most of access is already loaded in memory. And so it's just literally just switching to that form. Faster task completion, iterations, VB code loops, that kind of stuff, queries, all right? Uh, designing and drawing forms and reports, that stuff should speed up. But again, this will not speed up processes that are I.O. intensive, involving lots of disk read writes or network data. Keep that in mind. You may get a little performance improvement from disk read writes, a little bit, uh, because Access will have priority and, and will we'll get access to that, that, uh, that, that disk information faster than other processes will. But it's not going to improve a slow hard drive. All right, if you got a solid state drive, you might notice definite improvement, but if you got an older hard drive, that's, that's your bottleneck right there. Now some drawbacks, resource hogging. That means access is gonna get priority. So if you get other stuff running in the background, you switch over to your web browser, that might run slower, all right? Excel, if you got Excel running, that's gonna run slower, all right? It may cause system instability. Now access and most of Microsoft Office and newer applications, they're good with it, but sometimes some older applications especially, uh, they, they don't like being put in the background and not having, you know, the right access to the CPU when they want it. So it, it could cause other applications to misbehave. I've got to put overheating and battery drain on here just as warnings. Um, shouldn't be a problem with most newer computers. But if you're, you know, if you're taxing that CPU with your access application, it could happen, especially if you're overclocking your CPU, which I never think is a good idea. Um, battery drain, obviously, if access is, is uh, got priority, it's going to drain your laptop battery faster. And issues for other users, if you're on a network and you've got um, a multi-user access database set up and your access database is taking priority, it could slow other people down because you're doing all the read writes and stuff, locking records, blah, blah, blah. It could cause other people to not perform well. So you might want to only do this maybe for your, you know, your weekend reports. You come in on a Friday late and you do your, your weekend stuff, right? It's good for complex queries and calculations, like I've already mentioned. You know, you got a form that does a whole bunch of different uh, mathematical computations or a report that's got lots of math in it, all right? Data import and export. Like I said, it, it, you might get a, a moderate improvement with disk read writes, but uh, especially with network stuff, no, it's not going to help. Uh, report generation, searching and sorting, especially if those records are already in memory, okay? Form loading time and responsiveness and your VBA loops and record sets. You got a lot of iterative record set loops, those should run faster. And it won't help, again, IO operations mostly. Memory constraints, meaning if your database is really, really big and it can't all fit into RAM, then that's not gonna help you. You know, if you only got a gigabyte of RAM and you've got a bigger database than that, then meh, no. Because access has to keep constantly swapping in and out of memory to the hard drive, and so that's gonna slow you down. Uh, poor database design, make sure your tables are indexed, make sure your relationships are set up properly. All right, make sure your code is optimized. This is not going to make up for bad code, people. You got to learn your VBA and your SQL. <laughs> That's what my classes are for. <laughs> All right, and again, multi-user databases, you know, unless it's one of those things where you kick everybody else out and you want yours to run faster for the, you know, weekend reports or whatever, that's fine. But if you do optimize your performance over everyone else, then that's on you. Um, I do the same thing in my house <laughs> with my Wi-Fi. You could set something up called quality of service where certain devices get more priority from the Wi-Fi router than others. Don't, don't tell my fiance I, d I do this, but yeah, that's, that's why my Roku always runs better in my bedroom. <laughs> okay. All right, now, in the extended cut, what are we gonna do? Well, one of the problems with this method is that if you want your database to always run at higher priority, you have to do this every time you run the database. So in the extended cut, I'm gonna show you how you can use a batch file with some sleek Windows commands to have your database open in high priority all the time, every time you run it. That'll be covered in the extended cut for the members, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, all of them and lots of other perks. So check down below, you'll see a link to my membership page to get more information. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. 
Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover 
lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full-length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.